Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher, and I'm here with another episode of What Makes It Work. It's number 34. I haven't done one in an awful long time, but I did one uh, several years ago on a indicator magnetic base. So go back and look that up. I'll look that up. I'll, I'll flash that on the screen for you. You know, sometimes I'm not sure just who is watching my videos, so in case you do not know what a magnetic indicator holder is, here are several different styles, and this is an actual indicator used for precise measurement and comparing on lathes, milling machines, and machine shops in general. So there are two basic types. One is the rotary type here. There would normally be a stem on here. And this is a magnet, and when you turn it on, of course, it's pretty strong, and it will stick onto a machine, and you can easily turn it off. Well, there's also this stereotype, other companies make them as well, with a push button, on and off. So there it's in the on position, and the off position. So that's what we're going to operate on here, and this is the one that came from that green toolbox auction and I'll put the link in the description or a little clip of it here so you know what I'm talking about but this had an indicator on it that was pretty well ruined and mice got into that toolbox drawer and urinated on this and just it's really totally ruined I, I did clean it up a little bit but the corrosion here is tremendous and you really can't turn this one on and off other than with a hammer by the way, this also came in that toolbox, and there'll be a future video on how to make one of these, maybe. So, so it will work, but not by thumb pressure. So let's get started here. I'm going to take it apart, and I'll start by chiseling off these four rivets so we can see how it's put together. There's no name on this one, so whether or not it was a name brand, I do not know or actually care. Well, I already chiseled off two of the rivets, and I'm just using a, a Stanley number 60. I hate to sacrifice that, but I have many good methods of uh, resharpening, and it already did a toll on the end, as you can see. These aren't made for steel, but I've got a million of them. Now, I know some people get upset. Let's see, that knocks them right off. All right. Okay, that did the job. Just a little aluminum plate. Some of the more modern ones are uh, just a sticker, which I do not like. Wow, I don't know. I'm going to have to clean this up with a wire brush. I can't even tell how that's put together at this point. I'll be right back. Well, for the life of me, I can't figure out how to take this apart. There are no hidden fasteners. I thought maybe this whole thing would drive out or the whole push button would push out one way or the other. So I took the stem out here. And by the way, this was held in with Loctite. You can always tell that. thought maybe there was a hidden fastener in there, but there is not. The only thing I can think of yet is there are two little holes right here. They're blind holes. Possibly they're holes for some kind of pin uh, spanner to, to turn this out. So I'll experiment with that a little bit off camera. Otherwise, this might be the end of the video. Unless I could find the patent drawing on this, but I don't see any patents or any way to, to do this. I may have to do a little research. Be back in two minutes or two hours. Well, I don't know if I'm making any progress, but I went over to the drill press and I drilled those two holes out larger. That is 530 seconds because that is the smallest type of spanner that I own. So now that will fit. I'll put it on the vise and see if anything happens. I'm, I'm just trying to rotate it, turn it, to see if that is how it comes apart. Well, that was an abject failure. I thought maybe it would move, and I tapped gently on this. I feel that it's just about at the yield point where I will 
ruin my spanner and that's the only one I have so that evidently is not the way that it is assembled unless it's incredibly corroded in there or there's Loctite on it or something. Plan B. I have no plan B. Well this is getting a little more difficult than I thought so I did open up these two holes to 3 sixteenths and these are hardened dowel pins so I put those in there and a bar across it in the vise of course and again attempted in both directions but now I am realizing or thinking that if you can look into those holes now so let me do this and now you can see where that's moving in and out so I think this is a, a plate here that's only about an eighth of an inch thick maybe on both sides and now I'm pretty well convinced that it's been pressed into place so I'm gonna be brutal off camera and see what I can do to get that out I may drill some more holes in there even well Eureka something's happened here and I don't know what because it's really nothing I did unless I relieved some of the pressure by drilling those holes larger but now by putting the spanner in there I think the guys out over in England don't like me calling this a spanner but look it turns now but it is not threaded I think I'm going to be able to get it out of there yeah or is it threaded well where to go on the floor and all right that was my original thought is that it's threaded boy that's a fine thread isn't it very interesting and it's full of rust and corrosion and corruption do they still make liquid wrench you only hear about Troy Owens so I'm putting a little a little there's tons of it and I'm going to try working that back and forth now and see oh that's freeing it up a lot already isn't it So now we can kind of see what's happening. I wouldn't mind taking the other end out or will it... I have a feeling now that's going to push out. I can hear it now. Why are you ruining that beautiful... That's coming. I love this copper hammer. How can you love a tool? Huh? Let's see what's happening on the other side. It's pulling out. I think we're getting somewhere. I never did like the smell of liquid wrench. You get it on your hands. It's there for the whole day. Just like gasoline. You can't get it off until you take three showers. One last time here. Let's see if that pops out. And it does. Very interesting. Let me clean that off. You know what? This is getting more interesting by the minute. And you know, I just did a little research on the computer, and this Starrett is over $200. So I, I was really shocked at that, but it moves quite smoothly. And then I was thinking, well, maybe this is a Starrett. But I guess not, because uh, it's a little bit different. Or is it? Because this Starrett has a screw here, but maybe that's to hold the stem on. I don't know. Is that a Starrett? I could not. No, it's built different, isn't it? It's built. To, all right, let's get back to this. I got sidetracked. All right. So I've had this apart already, and I've cleaned it. But I almost need that vise to hold that to get it out. You know, this may be restorable. <laughs> But looking into the bore here, 
you'll see that the other end is also threaded but they have the uh, the little pin marks you know for the spanner on the inside and of course that would have assembled been assembled very easily when it was all clean and new so I took this wire brush in the drill press and cleaned that real well on the inside it was a little bit corroded and then I oiled it a little bit but first of all this is the magnet right here and you can see how strong that is wow that is a strong magnet so we're moving it in and out of the bore well big deal you're thinking and so am I but uh, after I clean this if anyone can find patents on this please put it in the comments I would love to see it but looking in there can you see that there is a brass ring in there maybe that's why these cost so much and one in the bottom but I don't think that's going to show up as well I'm only making it worse here I think with this you know I should use my little bore scope how about the brighter one ah that's no good anyway there's a brass ring in there so evidently and I can't really explain this because I don't understand the magnetic flux and all that perhaps someone far more learned and intelligent than I will explain that in the comments so always read the comments so now I don't remember which way it went maybe it doesn't make any difference but the ends of uh, the chrome here are a little bit mushroomed I don't know if I did it or someone else did it but I've been using a brass hammer but just a little bit oversized there so who cares and I put a little oil on this because there was rust in there no wonder I, it was yeah that's not gonna go through I got it backwards okay I've been working on this for 15 minutes I think I've got it pretty well freed up as you can see and let me pull this out again and it's still tricky to get out because the magnet itself is so incredibly strong so I'll pull that out and I made a few new discoveries first of all there is only one brass ring in here I said that there was one on each side well I cleaned it up much better in there and you can see that brass ring and the fact that it's a brass plate in there so in other words this is a sandwich here of iron or steel brass and then more iron and when I clean this end up on the belt sander you can see that it's assembled with brass pegs and drilled into the press uh, brass <laughs> pegs there was this so those little rivets were actually in the brass and I think I tore them out of there rather than sheared them and I've cleaned up the magnet real well well not perfect there's still there's still rust on there but I, I cleaned up this so when we move this back and forth boy that's strong what we're doing here is when it comes all the way out to the end right here can you see that this part of the magnet here is beyond the brass and when we push it back the other way both poles I suppose there's a, a north and a south here are beyond the brass plate peg a brass plate boy well I'm not sure if you learned anything or not but at least it was interesting to see how this is constructed even if you do not understand lines of force and flux and all of that and I've again cleaned this real well and uh, wiped it out and then put just a tiny amount of oil on it similarly I cleaned this up but I tell you they must have done this in a clean room because this attracts the most minute amounts of uh, of dust and chips around here I'm going to reassemble this and <laughs> recondition it so this is all cleaned up real well again with a little oil on there I saw just one tiny little chip which will interfere but look at how freely that moves now 
Now, of course, I trashed this plate out, and who cares, because it wasn't marked anyway. But I want to clean this up a little bit, and I think it's going to be a real struggle getting it into that really, really fine thread to get it started straight, I mean. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Maybe I'll even clean... Or this needs to be cleaned up real well. And actually, I guess I'm doing a restoration. This should be painted, but you know me and paint. All right, I've cleaned this up a little bit, but I didn't get all the paint off. Not in the mood. So let's lay it on there, and I put oil on those little fine threads. Where, oh, where is my spanner, Governor? I don't want to cross thread it. Well, there it is. Nice and flush. Oh, yeah. Moves as nicely as the sterret. By the way, I guess maybe I never mentioned that, but you can use it either way. Three sides, actually. I guess I never thought about that before, although you can well see. One, two, three. Well, it doesn't look good, but it works. Let me polish this up and get back to you. You know, I don't want to take too much off of this. Some of these are chrome-plated because they, uh, they need to be smooth and accurate so the clamps will clamp properly on them. Be back in a little bit. Boy, this video ended up so long. Really, I thought it would be a three-minute to five-minute video short. No. Well, you know, this video ran just a little bit long, so I'm going to call this part 34A, and I'm going to do a second part, 34B, where I believe I will complete the full restoration to this indicator holder, because I don't know if you can tell, but this is bent. The thread is bent down here, and it's incredibly corroded from mouse urine, so I'm going to make a new post. And it'll run straight. I'm going to paint this thing, and I'm going to make a new cover. This one, of course, is mutilated, and it won't say anything on it other than tubal cane. So that's what I'll do in part whoop, B, if you are interested. Leave a comment, and watch many of my other videos. And remember, this is number 34, so there are 33 other videos in this series, if you like how it works. So check out the playlist on that. I'll put the link down in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.